Hello guys and welcome back to comment and it's time for another video and today we're going to create a background um, that is going to be made of sprites we will just repeat so, so it will look like an infinite background this will be going on the i axis so the uh, vertical but you can also do it on the horizontal axis you just need to view, change a little bit of details and i think you guys can do it so what we got in the scene is an orthographic camera to make sure that it doesn't matter where you put an object will always be the same size and also already imported a background sprite uh, and well nothing really changed um, so we got this sprite we're just going to create an empty and call it background and we're just going to set this up 0 0 10 so that means that it's already 10 in the background but what we're going to do with this one is like the background of the background. Normally, um, in like a normal game, for example, this was like a real world or whatever, you will see that there were also some trees in the background and kind of that. But this is just the basic. And most games, I think, got them already. Uh, something like this. That it is just infinite. But we're going to put it like. Well, another 10 behind, so it's like the background of the background. And we're going to call it background 1, because we're going to have two of them. Uh, we're also going to scale this up. 1.5, 1.5, and uh, I'm sorry, this is 2. So now it just fits perfectly inside your camera, and it's a little bit bigger, so that when someone got an the screen and just changing the resolution, um, you won't see like something next to it. So it's always good to have a little bit of a march. Um, also, duplicate this one and call this one background2 and just move this up. And what you see here is that there it isn't like tileable. So the guy who made this texture, uh, me, made a mistake. And that can happen a lot of times and you can just try to fix this or you can just think, ah, let's just do minus with the i-axis and everything is alright. You won't see the problem anymore. Um, so as you can see, this one is 15 higher than this one. And that's very important. Um, that's because we are going to move them so by 30. Because this is 15, but then it's exact same space and we don't want that. We want to move it up, uh, a little bit more up. So we're going to move them uh, every time by 30. We're going to watch the scripts. We're going to create a new C Sharp script and call it background. So, it is a transform that we're going to move, so it's of course very logical that we are going to say public transform background 1 and public transform background 2. Then we're also going to have that, oops, then we're also going to have that we've got a private bool. Which one? Because we want not always the same background, we want to do one time the one and then the other one and, and so on and which one is going to be true that's very important then we got the public transform cam and a public float or let's just create private why not private float current height and because at the moment you start the game you actually already moved for first one so we're going to set this to 15 because if you can see it there is already one moved from like the uh, original spot which is 0, 0, 0 so this one actually already moved and that's why we're going to start by 15 so within the update we are going to have an if uh, statement and actually two in total a current height is going to be less than can dot position dot i then it means that you're like moving above the um the position that can happening so that you get higher because the current height is a variable that will see what the height is of the current um of the most above uh, texture what also can happen is that you can lower so what you actually need to do is current height is going to be more than cam.position.i plus 10, uh, 15 I mean, sorry. Um, the 15, that's of course because um, 
there's like someone someone um, lower than it and the current height goes about like the uh, most above one so we need to make sure that everything is all right um, then here we're going to do that and we're going to check which one we need to move so if which one is true we want to move the first one and otherwise the second one so what we're going to do here is background whoops background background one dot local position is very important it's going to be a new factor three and there are a few things uh, we know for certain that the x and the set, uh, the x is nil, 0 and the set is 10. We know that for certain, so we don't need to change anything else there. So 0, we're going to do here a formula, 10. The formula here is very simple. It's just background1 dot local position dot i plus 15. Um, I'm sorry, sorry, 30, we just said that. So actually we're just adding 30 to the local position of the i-axis. Nothing very hard to understand. Uh, we're just going to copy this line and we are going to put here an else statement. So if it isn't the first one, it's going to be the second one. So we're just going to copy paste it and just say here too and here too and everything will work because it's the exact same formula you do, right? Then you're going to say that the current height is, you're going to add there 50. I think also that is very logical because you need to know what, which one is the most above. And well, if you're adding 15, the next one is most above. Um, then we're going to say which one is the same as the negative of which one. So we just, if this is true, then we're going to make it false. If it's false, we're going to make it true. So next time we're picking the other one. So now we're just going to copy it. And what we're now going to do is like the opposite of what we just did. So we're going to have minus, minus. We're going to say that, well, of course, because it's reversed. We're going to say that this is two and this is one, and this is two, this is one. I think it's also very logical. And here minus, of course. So I think that if you understand this part, you also understand that this one is just the reversed version of that. Then we're going to assign everything and we're just going to watch the background and just add a new script called background and just assign background one, background two, and the main camera. Again, not very hard, I think. Then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to watch scene and because we don't didn't make like that the camera is normally moving, we're just going to do it by hand for now. So when you're moving up, you see it is moving up and if you see in the preview let's just put it right here i don't know if you guys can see it right you don't see like a seam or whatever and when we're moving downwards the exact opposite happens so this is what's happening and i hope you guys liked it if you did please leave a like or subscribe it's really really appreciated and i see you guys next week bye